Welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are following, know that I relocated from Canada to Spain. And I want to go over a couple of things, a couple of cultural shocks that I experienced. Nevertheless, this was the right decision and whoever is thinking of uprooting their life and actually making a huge leap and relocating, you should definitely do so. The life experience, the exposure, it's definitely worth it and you are never going to regret being in a different country learning a new language and moving countries definitely was one of the biggest decisions i have ever done regardless of how this is going to turn out i'm extremely grateful to be able to experience this because not everyone is giving the opportunity but if you are one of those people who are debating whether or not to move countries and if you see a possibility and if your job allows you and your children are more or less on board, you should do it. It was one of the most challenging and one of the most beautiful decisions I have taken in the last three years for sure. And if you have good support, if you have family that is always on your side, no matter what you do, moving countries is not going to be as difficult. It was not as difficult for me because of the support of my family, because of the support of my parents, of my sister. And I am forever grateful for having such strong family connections. So if you are like me, even if you're not like me, moving countries should definitely be on your bucket list, on your to-do list. In this video, I am going to go over benefits, pluses and minuses, cause you know, there is no perfect country for you to live in. There's obviously going to be ups and downs to no matter where you move. I moved from Canada to Spain with my children. I relocated this summer. So this is an extremely new chapter, a new adventure, new beginning for me and for my children as well. It took us a while to kind of make this as a collective decision. First, my daughter was not on board and then eventually she did decide that she wants to live with us here. So. It was a bit of a rocky road, but I am here. I'm just waiting for my son to travel here next week because he starts university in a city nearby. For those of you who are single mothers, you understand the importance of having your children around. Even if they're older, you still want to make sure that they are within reach, that you can always help them, support them, and be close to them. Or if you are a family who decided to relocate, I want to go over a couple of points that I experienced personally. This is definitely from my experience. Whether or not you are relocating or you are thinking of relocating, if you can do it for a year or two, not necessarily for uh, the long term, you should definitely do it. Moving was one of the best decisions I have taken in the last three years. It was extremely challenging. It equals to like a fire, I swear to God, like packing everything, not knowing where are your things. It teaches you such an important lesson that physical things don't matter as much as emotional and family and connections. Because I lived in Toronto in the last couple of weeks as a minimalist because all of my things were packed and on a container on the boat traveling to Spain. So I was literally living as a minimalist. I had minimum clothes, minimum shoes, minimum utensils, minimum kitchen things. And the same thing for my children. It really taught us a lesson how you really don't need that many things. You really are not using at least 50% of your clothes, of your shoes, of your kitchen supplies. I was in shock to find out that it really is our own perception of how our life should be and our own perception and media influence that you need 10 dresses and you need 10 pair of shoes. You don't, you really don't. And one of the number one lessons that I learned is that you can be a minimalist and you really do not need that many physical things. Cultural experience, moving countries really will broaden your view on life, on how other people live, on what are their priorities, how people spend their time, how people spend their money, what do they actually perceive as life and work balance. Because in Spain, one of the major things that actually persuaded me to move because I have little children and I have older children. The balance between life and work is extremely high 
towards life. When they have those afternoon siestas and everyone is annoyed by them, Mostly North Americans are annoyed, those who are used to getting things done right away. For them, it's normal to have a break in the afternoon. It's normal for the day to be done at 5 and for people to be outside until 10 at least with their children. Besides the weather allowing this to happen, it's actual life-work balance. They really do not prioritize work as much as they prioritize family and children and themselves. Another huge point is adaptability. When you learn how to adapt in different situations, basically if you know how to move countries with your children by yourself or with your partner or with your family, you can take on the world. It's literally a nerve wracking and pretty invigorating experience because you understand how little everything matters but your health and your children and minimum things. Independence. Living in a new country is going to teach you independence. You are not gonna be relying on a system as much that you're used to because you are in a new country. You don't know how it works yet. You don't have connections. You don't know people that know people that know people. So you need to kind of start fresh, start from the beginning. And that is going to teach you how to be independent. So if you can adapt in a new country with your children by doing, you know, signing them up for schools, finding universities, getting their bank account, registering them with the city, then you can actually do anything. Language skills. Learning a new language, it's such an amazing training tool for your brain, for your children. Imagine the possibilities of knowing three or four languages. If your children are immigrants, well, my children were born Canadians, but if their parents are immigrants like I am, there are already two languages spoken at home. So introducing another language is going to be that much easier for them. And it's going to really improve and broaden their view. They are going to be extremely empowered by the fact that they know how to speak two, three, four languages. Resilience, another positive point. You are going to become that much more resilient because you are going to face obstacles, language barrier, knowledge of the system barrier. You don't know how everything functions here, so you are learning from the beginning. So it's definitely gonna build up your resilience, you'll see. Diverse friendships. That doesn't mean that you are going to forget your old friends from whatever country you're moving, but learning to make new friendships, it doesn't matter the age. It's actually a pretty cool experience. Besides the fact that these new friends can show you around and improve your language, it's definitely different cultural barriers are going to be overcome because you will learn how to adapt to different people. You're not going to be free as you are with your friends from back home, but it's gonna teach you how to adapt to different personalities, how to welcome different people in your life. It's an extremely amazing experience. Personal growth. Overall, moving is an extremely big personal growth. You being by yourself or with your family, not having all the acquaintances, all the friends, everyone around you is going to make you grow. It's going to improve your self-awareness. You are going to learn how to function on your own without necessarily being surrounded and without necessarily being in your comfort zone. Remember, comfort and growth cannot be in the same room. So your move is definitely going to make you grow. Okay, so we know how good it is to move countries and we've covered the bases. Now let's go over a couple of negative things. And negative things, I don't mean it to say it to actually disencourage anyone from moving, but this is the reality of things. And as a person who moved countries this summer, I would want to share them just so people are not in the clouds and they don't mistaking tourism with immigration. Cultural shock, adapting to a new environment can be a shock to anyone. You're gonna feel disoriented, you're gonna feel a level of discomfort, which is, if I'm gonna be a little bit positive about it, it's actually a sign of growth. But not everyone can take it as easily. So for those of us who have slight anxiety, who are overthinking like I am, I feel a slight discomfort by being in a country that I don't know how it functions yet fully. 
besides doing all the research, nothing is going to prepare you for what you're facing when you are here. So be aware and be ready to feel the discomfort and to feel a little bit out of place when you move countries. Legal and administrative challenges, be ready to be an immigrant in a new country before you settle all your paperwork, before you settle your work visa or nomad visa. You will feel like an immigrant. Because of the language barrier, that's another thing, because I encountered it and I'm a such a transparent and straightforward person. Even going and registering my children at school was so challenging for me because I felt like I cannot express myself and I felt, you know, like, what is wrong, Valentina? You cannot even say two, three sentences. And I thought I knew Spanish at least a little bit better. So another thing that you should really strive to do before you move countries is try to learn the language at least 50 to 60 percent. Financial strain, it's extremely expensive to move countries. Generally sending all your things on a boat in a container, it really costs us more than we expected. That's why you should have a budget for it. If you're sending your cars, always do the calculations and make sure it's worth it to send your furniture and to send your cars. Basically the big things. All of the small things, it's fine. You can book a quarter of a container and just put all of your boxes, all of your personal items, clothes. But if you are thinking of bringing big pieces, furniture and cars, make sure you do your calculations and check if it's not cheaper and less expensive to buy them locally. One more last point. For introverts moving countries and having to be socially opened and asking questions and not be shy is a bit of a challenge so if you're an introvert work on your social skills become a closeted introvert and come across as an extrovert and ask questions ask people ask for directions anyways for those of you who are moving please do comment down below how did your move go how did you handle which country you moved to if you have any questions make sure you leave a comment i will make sure to answer it and if you are moving, good luck.